Alrighty, my mateys, welcome back. And in this fabulous tutorial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this gather link, and I'm actually gonna name that gather links, since there is more likely more than one link on a web page. And all this function is gonna do is we're gonna pass it in a URL of a page, and it's gonna get the HTML, and then it just says, hey, you know that link finder engine you built earlier? I'm gonna throw in all my HTML and I just want the links back. So again, we did like 90% of the work right here. But of course, as always, we have one little issue. It's not really a problem. It's actually pretty interesting. But um, this link finder that we built right here, it takes human readable string HTML. And by that, I mean, as we already looked at in the demo, if you just have, you know, some tags like this, HTML, HTML, and you have some links in there, we can throw this in and it's gonna parse it perfectly. This thing works fine. But fabulous, fantastic Python, it always has to do things differently. Whenever we use this module to connect to a website and get the HTML, it doesn't give us the HTML back in a human readable string. It actually returns the results in a bytes, ones and zeros. So before we can just go ahead and pass the server response to this link finder, what we need to first do is we need to convert those bytes to characters, human readable characters. And it's a little bit goofy, but I'll show you guys and talk you guys through all of it. So we're gonna go ahead and make a static method and it was named too lazy to type that gather links now again the only thing that we need to pass in here is just the URL of the page and again it's just gonna crawl that page and return a set of links now what we need is a variable for the HTML string so again whenever we first connect to the server and get the response back that's gonna be in bytes ones and zeros something that only the computer can understand however this variable, we're gonna store the actual string after we convert it. So that's what that's gonna be. Now, any time, I wanna say like 99% of the time, whenever you're doing like networking operations or server operations in Python, it's always a good idea to throw it inside a try accept statement. So that way, if you have any weird server errors, then it doesn't crash your entire program and you can handle the exceptions however you want. So first, I'll show you how to just connect to this web page. So whenever you connect to a web page, you use the function URL open. So we give it URL and we'll just say, I don't know, maybe it's this URL or something. It's gonna go ahead and make a connection and store the response right here. So just like you're in a browser and you get some data back, it's gonna store it right in there. Now, unlike a browser, this is actually byte data. So what we need to do first is we need to make sure that it's actual HTML data. And you actually probably don't need to do this, but it's always a good idea because that way if you crawl like a PDF file or maybe someone has like an executable that they link to, we really don't want to be worrying about those. So again, in order to check if it's an actual HTML file and if your, code, if your uh, website is in like Node or PHP or anything like that, this is all HTML, it gets parsed before. So don't worry that Oh, my PHP slate isn't gonna work. It will. Um, all right, so response, get header. Why did that not autocomplete? It's scaring me now. Content type text slash HTML. And again, this just says, okay, first make sure that we're connecting to an actual web page and not like some executable or weird PDF or anything like that. Once we ensure that, then we're gonna wanna go ahead and get the response of that and we are going to read it in. So this right here, it just reads in the raw response as it's coming over the ethernet cable. So again, all of this right here, these HTML bytes, those are just ones and zeros. However, we need to convert it to an actual string. So what we do is for the string variable right here, set this equal to HTML bytes dot decode and UTF eight. 
Now, there's a bunch of different types of character encoding. UTF-8 is used 99% of the time. This just means um, like English human readable characters. So nothing goofy. It's pretty much the standard, but you need to specify it anyways. So basically, take those ones and zeros that were coming across that got sent back to us from the new Boston server, convert them to a HTML string, and this is what we can actually pass on to Link Finder. So now what we can do is create a link finder object. And whenever we create a link finder object, we need to pass it two things, the base URL, which is the homepage URL and the URL that we are currently crawling. And again, this is just for link formatting and this is for gathering the actual links. So what are my variables? spider.base URL and the page URL. So after that, after we initialize that, remember, I don't even know if you guys remember from like the second video, but then you call the feed function. So this is where you actually pass in the HTML data and it's gonna go ahead and parse it. So then we can return all of the links and all of that's taken care of as soon as you call that. You don't have to actually call those methods manually. Pretty awesome. So that's what should happen. But now we have to say, okay, well, what about if, you know, maybe you're trying to connect to a link on a page that doesn't exist anymore. Or maybe the server thought you were trying to hack their website and they booted you off. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, let's just go ahead and instead of crashing our program, we'll just say error um, cannot crawl page cannot crawl page uh. and what this function is going to do is it's going to return a set hopefully of links but if we get an error we still need to return a set or else the calling uh, function for this is going to generate an error because it didn't return the proper thing so if we get an error then we're just going to go ahead and return an empty set and this is basically saying hey that page you wanted me to crawl there weren't any links on it so there you go so after this hopefully we didn't get this we're going to have some nice juicy links in a set so how do we get those well we just call this function page links and it just returns the page link so return finder which is an object that just parsed our site page links, and there you go. So again, just to recap one last time, what this function does is it connects to a site, it takes the HTML, converts it to a proper string HTML format, it passes it on to Link Finder, Link Finder parses through it, gets a set of all of the links on it, all of the URLs, and as long as you didn't get any issues, it just returns them for you. So now we got a cool function where we can say, hey, gather links, and as soon as you call it, you get back all the URLs, makes things a whole lot easier.